Washed by the waters of three different seas, Turkey has always been a place for wayfarers from east and west. Adventurers, crusaders and conquerors, they left behind the remains of some of history's greatest civilizations. Founded in the 5th century BC, the city of Semena was a jewel in the crown of three ancient empires, Lycian, Roman and Byzantine. Today, it's hard to see past the ruins of medieval times, but each era has left its mark, often buried deep beneath the earth. Semena is just one of thousands of ancient sites scattered across Turkey, a country which boasts more ancient Greek settlements than Greece, more Roman ruins than Italy. This country is built layer upon layer on the remains of great civilizations, which makes Turkey an archaeologist's treasure trove and a plunderer's paradise. Professional Sami Gulana prides himself on being one of the best in a bad business, smuggling. These are the objects of desire the remains of ancient Turkey, which today are quite often worth their weight in gold. These relics are from Perge, a 2,000-year-old city in the south of the country, which, over the years, has had its fair share of looting. A walk through Perge is a walk through the ages. This was a city colonised by Greeks after the Trojan War visited by Alexander the Great and Paul the Apostle, a centre of sculpture and urban planning during the golden days of the Roman Empire. Parlak evresinde de su çok önemli bir rol oynamakta. 10 kilometre kuzey batıdan gelen su bu binanın, bu yapının arkasına gelmekte. Ve Kestros nehrini sembolize... For Professor Haluk Abusulu, the man in charge of Perge's excavations, every discovery is a triumph of tenacity over austerity. Ve bu atriyumlu şurada bugün bir bulduğumuz... Şunu açar mısınız hemen? Kaldırın şu taşı. Bir Roma kuyusu. Hı hı. Bir Roma kuyusu. Ha. İçindeki su, içindeki su eski su. Ta 1700 yıldan beri kullanılan bir kuyu. These people work for love, not money. All the government could afford for the three month summer dig was $6,000. But if uncovering artifacts is a struggle, Protecting them is even harder. Bunların değerini halkımız bilmiyor ve dolayısıyla sadece ve sadece ticari amaçla fazla para kazanmak amacıyla bu işi yapıyor. Nasıl bir eroin kaçakçılığı bugün bütün dünyada mevcutsa, bir silah kaçakçılığı mevcutsa, antika kaçakçılığı da mevcut. the turnstile for Turkey's smuggled treasures, Istanbul's Grand Bazaar. Behind the dazzling displays is a multi-million dollar black market in antiquities. This is where the looters come to offload their bounty. From here, the artifacts usually follow a well-worn path through Bulgaria to Germany, where they're laundered before reaching their final destinations. Bu bakımdan 2 milyardan ziyade 60 milyarı vereyim kazanayım ve bir an önce köşeyi döneyim. 
Bu burada olsa ne olur, olmasa ne olur? Çok kültürel gelişmesini de sağlayamamış insanlar bu işi yaptığı için. E, asıl mesele kısa yoldan çok zengin olmak. En büyük engel bu. There are many obstacles facing Turkey's anti-smuggling police. They have few officers, primitive resources and a huge brief. Across the country are hundreds of prime raiding sites. Archaeological digs, open-air galleries and museums without even an inventory of their artifacts. Still, the police boast a high strike rate. Türkiye'de bir yıl içerisinde yaptığımız eski evser operasyonu yaklaşık ortalama yüzde 50 filan, e, 150 civarında oluyor. Bu 150 olay içerisinde de yine yaklaşık 400 civarında insan yakalıyoruz. Bu 400 insanın kaçırdığı eski eser yarısı sikke olmak kaydıyla 8 bin civarında. And how much of the overall traffic do you believe you're able to intercept? Biz Türkiye'de bir yıl içerisinde meydana gelen eski eser kaçakçılığının yaklaşık yüzde 95'ini hakimiz ve yakalıyoruz. It seemed an incredible success rate. So we went looking for the inside story. We found it in Mugla prison, southwest Turkey. The prison director was taking us to meet Sami Gulena, a smuggler turned informant in jail on an unrelated charge of counterfeiting. A man regarded by criminals and police alike as a latter-day Houdini, the transporter who could make any artifact, no matter how cumbersome, disappear across the border. At first camera shy, Sami eventually did have something to say. For starters, there was no way the police were intercepting 95% of smuggled antiques. Hayır, çok yanlış bir şey. Ben bu fikre hiçbir zaman için iştika, iştirak etmiyorum. Ee, tarihi eser kaçakçılığını durdurabilmeleri için bir kere tarihi eser kaçakçılığı Türkiye'nin her tarafında bir sanayi dalı gibi çalışmakta. 100 bin kişi burada define aramakta ve bu çıkan 100 bin kişi yani 100 bin kişinin çalışmış olduğu bu sanayi dalı en sonunda Türkiye'de bir üçgen olarak düşünelim. According to Sami, many smuggled artifacts eventually wind up in the auction rooms of prestigious London art houses, Christie's and Sotheby's. Bana göre dünyada antika yani tarihi eser silkülasyonunun yüzde sekseni Türkiye'den postalanmaktadır bunu. Yüzde sekseni bu kesin bir rakam. Nereden diyeceksiniz? Ben Sotobi'nin Christie'nin kataloglarını karıştırdığım zaman, antik kataloglarını karıştırdığım zaman orada gördüğüm parçanın altmış tanesinin, yetmiş tanesinin Anadolu kökenli olduğunu anlıyorum. Trying to retrieve the treasures after they've skipped the country is the latest step in Turkey's antiquities campaign. There are currently six court cases underway in Europe and America. The Perge collection, now housed in the Antalya Museum, has directly benefited from Turkey's tough stance. This is the garlanded sarcophagus a stone coffin dating back to the second century AD. It's recognized around the world as the finest example of its type. It was unearthed in Perge, but in the mid-1980s mysteriously disappeared, only to resurface in 1987 at the Brooklyn Museum. It wasn't until 1994, after seven years of wrangling, threats and counter-threats, that the sarcophagus finally made it home. This is one of Turkey's great success stories, but unfortunately, only one of the few. Perge's most famous son, Weary Hercules, has not been so fortunate. Antalya Museum has only the bottom half of this prized statue, a Roman copy of a Greek Hercules. The top half resides in the United States, owned jointly by the Boston Museum and private collectors Leon Levy and Shelby White, the latest targets in Turkey's campaign. And you don't happen to know how the top half of Hercules made it to Boston, do you? Şimdi ben bunu söylersem suç olur, suç duyurusu olur. Eğer ülkeler nasıl gitmişse o da öyle gitmiştir, aynı yöntemle gitmiş olur. 
Yani bir farklılık yok yani. Bu bir bu bir Marsyos'un heykeli ya da Herekles'in üstü veya ne bileyim Sezar'ın başı diye farklı bir yöntemi yok bunun. Yöntemi hep aynı. I am sick to feel that my best one statue in two pieces in different continent and museum collection. I I wanted to see it before I die. The two pieces come together. This one here. Dr. Jale Inan, the matriarch of Turkish archaeologists unearthed the bottom half of Hercules in 1980. The top half wasn't discovered until a year later, in America. Its owners claimed it bore no relation to the statue in Turkey, but Dr. Inan believed otherwise. After a 10-year struggle, plaster casts were made of the two portions and, ever so slowly, brought together. It was a perfect fit. Today, however, Four years later, Hercules still stands divided. It is found in Turkey, long Turkey, and this is the best copy of the Heracles Farnese in the world. And I will be so happy when I see them together. Until the recent change of government here, Professor Engen Erzgen was the director of museums and monuments the person who sent in the lawyers to bring Turkey's treasures home. He believes artefacts are the jigsaw pieces of history and that the picture will never be complete until all are joined together in Turkey. Hence, the Herculean battle for Hercules. We tried the most friendly way to solve the problem, but uh, they still... Uh, insist that they are not going to return it to Turkey. That leaves uh, only one uh, solution open, that is to go to the court, which we have uh, instructed our lawyers to do that. Is it really fair for somebody who's bought something in good faith to then have Turkey knocking on the door and saying, hey, we want it back now? According to our law, the antiquities cannot leave the country. So if they have left the country, that means it must be on illegal ways. But for those who've already bought an artifact, can you really expect them to give it up? If I were them, I will return them with great fanfare to Turkey, okay? First of them, they will receive a red carpet treatment for us, from us. They will be our eternal guests in the Turkey, so it's worthwhile, I think. But it's still not a Roman head in the lounge room, is it? <laughs> no, but... Um, um, our aim, main aim was, in 1992, to put a halt to the smuggling and the plundering of art objects. But to put a stop is, a very, I think it's a very optimistic way to put it. I mean, there is no way you can put an end to, an, uh, to money. Money, or rather the lack of it, is often what motivates farmers to till Turkey's soil for artifacts the first link in the smuggling chain. Here in Perge, along the edge of the old city walls, there's no shortage of relics for the taking. Adnan Choban is finding it hard to farm. He keeps turning up tombs. That makes a total of seven tombs and one statue. Most of the finds have been turned over to the museum for a few hundred dollars, but some haven't. Adnan's uncle, Suleiman, is a convicted looter. But he and his neighbours say they're just honest farmers trying to make a living. A living which might have been quite handsome indeed, was Suleiman not caught with a dump truck full of sand and a stone tomb in the bottom. Ben onu atlan şey yaptı. Ben de bir şey denk gelmedi ama isim çıktı da başka bir türlü oldu yani isim değişikliği oldu. Bana şey yaptılar. Bir de yardımcı olduk yine cezaevinde yattık. Keyfen. Bundan sonra altın bulsam da almam. 
Şimdi vatandaş normalde bir mal teslim etmez yani. Para çok az miktarda para veriyor yani. Dolmuş parasını kurtarmıyor. Ben buldum tabanın ağzında çıktı. Bir tane layet. Yanında bir daha çıktı. Verdikleri 15 milyon lira para. Avrupa'ya kaçtığı zaman trilyon hesaplıyorlar. Burada bizim vermeden artık bir şey vermiyorlar. The biggest battle for Turkey in safeguarding its riches, it seems, is convincing its own people that their heritage is worth holding on to. But that won't happen while international buyers continue to pay exorbitant prices for Turkey's black market artifacts. If you're not able to reduce smuggling significantly, what does that mean for Turkey and its heritage? I mean, if the foreign interest continues in the same pace. So I'm afraid that Turkey will be empty within a century. You found anything? No, only this part. <laughs> but it could be important. As Turkish lawyers fight their way through the international courts, seeking a return of their nation's antiques, out here in Perge, the real work continues. Whether gold, clay or glass, every discovery here is a treasure, a key not only to Turkey's history, but the heritage of humankind. <laughs>